from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Health Foods manufacturer Future Life has opened a new factory in KwaZulu Natal. Darren Parker tells us more. Future Life, which is owned by food and beverage company PepsiCo South Africa, has opened a brand new manufacturing facility in the Dubai Trade Port Special Economic Zone in KwaZulu Natal. The 75 million rand modern factory, located minutes away from the King Shaka International Airport, has been designed to streamline production processes, enhancing efficiency and flexibility to better meet the evolving needs of the company's customer base. The facility will also have a design studio for developing new products. Engineering News attended the factory launch and spoke to PepsiCo CEO Rion Hale about the reasons behind the investment and what the future holds for the Future Life brand. The Future Life business had been operating with great success uh, from a, a specific footprint, uh, but like any business that have achieved success, there were real opportunities in terms of growth uh, capability that was needed, uh, enhancement of process and efficiency, either through having better infrastructure or uh, adding capacity, uh, and of course uh, the ability to renew quality systems, uh, which wasn't possible on the previous footprint that the, that the company had. Uh, so the move here was pretty much fueled by, by future growth and capability that could be uh, established. Uh, and then of course converted to value which ultimately then could be reinvested over time to drive innovation and, and make sure that we, we service need states more effectively across consumers. The next phase of the new facility investment will see Future Life use the factory's 8,500 meter square roof for solar energy which will be accomplished through the integration of solar energy systems into the facility's operations. Rainwater gathering initiatives will also contribute to the factory's sustainable water practices. The first real drive was to physically relocate facilities. Um, business continuity was the first objective uh, and especially during a period of moving things there is expected disruption. So the primary focus was to lift and shift facilities and that's largely been done as you experienced during the factory tour today. Uh, and now that the facility is becoming operational, now we can start really adding value. Uh, and the two big initiatives will be the installation of solar uh, and then a rainwater harvesting. Now the, even the construction of the building and the roof construction will allow that to be switched on relatively easy. From a timeline perspective, we're hoping to do those things over the next 12 to 18 months uh, in respect of some of them. Uh, obviously, there's some, some supply constraints uh, and timing uh, in terms of the business, but business continuity has been secured through the phase one initiative and now phase two can be kicked off. It's all encumbersome in the total 75 million investment, um, so the total construction and cost of, of, of the project will be encumbered in that, in that 75 million. There will be ongoing enhancements like with any business, uh, but the total investment will, will cover the bulk of those initiatives. Locating the new factory within the Dubé Trade Port SEZ was a conscious choice designed to ensure a more efficient operation while also reducing logistics costs, as compared to the company's previous manufacturing facility further inland in Pine Town. It is also hoped that the new facility will provide more jobs for the surrounding communities. The total employment is around 190 if you consider all forms of employment uh, directly related to the business. Um, and if we, if we talk about additional manufacturing capability, which in all likelihood will be added here over the next 12 months, and that's not talking to the sustainability initiatives, that's talking to new technology and new processing. Uh, the expectation is that another 15 to 20 jobs will be created directly in manufacturing uh, over the next 12-month uh, period. But as the business grows uh, and as we become settled in, 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 in this great environment that we now have, there will be ongoing investment that, that comes behind it. Uh, Future Life itself, of course, is a very innovative brand, innovative brand touching on multiple consumer need states. Uh, and therefore the innovation funnel will, will fuel new technology. Now with new innovation there's always a tipping point around when you do it yourself and when you first start off with another partner until you've created critical mass and scale and that'll be informed by the innovation roadmap that the business has set over the next uh, 12 to 24 months. But in terms of direct employment there'll be an additional boost of around 10% over the next 12 month period.
Over the past three years, Future Life has become the fastest growing breakfast cereal and breakfast bar brand in South Africa, with an estimated one box of Future Life cereal sold per second in the country. This made it an easy decision for PepsiCo to acquire 100% of the brand effective July 1. We had owned the first 50% since 2015 and that was a fantastic partnership with Paul as the founding member. Uh, and the initial move was to gain access to a very innovative brand um, that had built very strong credentials in the nutrition space and I'll come back to that. So that was really the first move. Um, but then as this business became more successful and we looked at the skills that this business brought beyond the brand, the brand promise and the wonderful uh, products that was produced, um, we recognize that there's an opportunity to get closer to this business and lift and shift some of those capabilities. And a lot of that speaks to people, technology, digital, and you saw some of it in action. Uh, so we see a fantastic opportunity to nurture and protect the uniqueness of future life whilst lifting and shifting some of the capabilities both ways. Uh, not just from this business into PepsiCo, of course, in South Africa, but very much from PepsiCo uh, in, into this business. Uh, this brand is, is, is truly unique and differentiated. It has got credentials to stretch into becoming a lifestyle brand and not just a unique occasion-based offering, i.e. breakfast or snacking if you refer to bars. Um, and we believe that there's an opportunity to take the capabilities that PepsiCo in South Africa has through its great footprint and list of wonderful brands which we mentioned earlier uh, and complement what, what the Future Life portfolio brings today, be it in terms of innovation uh, and or manufacturing capability. So we saw it as a win-win uh, across both. Uh, and of course, finally, it strengthens our footprint in KZN as well, gives us more scale in this region when we start thinking about further investment and attracting talent to our to our business it extends our footprint from that perspective we've got a large milling operation we've got a big snacks business uh, and we've got a big bakery just up the road uh, but this unique provides us with another unique vehicle to attract uh, a talent to our organization so it was really a multifaceted uh, justification for the additional investment in in, in the business that's crema media's real economy report Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.